Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC 3D. So today we're gonna to be going through how to tram your U-car for best results. So basically what tramming is, is it just means that whatever cutter you have inside your router is gonna be absolutely perpendicular with your tool straight up and down. And as you can see, sometimes when you go through and surface your bed, you usually get these little ridges on here. So we've gone through and we've surfaced this bed here and we do have a couple of line ridges on here. So we're gonna go through how we can make a simple timber jig in order to be able to actually do and tram this machine. So you'll notice here at the front that we've just got a couple of tools here. Um, this is something that we've just made up. Basically what it actually is, it's just a piece of timber. It's 300 mil long. You can use some treated pine if you want to. We've just used a little bit of plywood here. On this side, we have a quarter inch bolt because we know that our router that we supply comes with a quarter inch collet. And all we've done is we've just drilled a couple of holes in this bit of timber and we've mount one, mounted one bolt through on this side. And then we've just put a nut over this side. Now, over on the other side here, we just had an M5 bolt and a nut. We could have used an M6, but this is really just to give us an indication of exactly how good our actual tramming is. Now, the only other tools that we require to do this is our two standard spanners that come with your router and a three mil Allen key. So basically the first thing that we need to do is we need to insert this little tool that we've made into our router. Now there's a reason why we have made it 300 mil and it's because we're gonna be swinging this around from one side through to the other. So we needed something that could fit within the surface of our bed. So at the moment, our u carve is currently powered off. It can be moved by hand, which you can move very carefully and slowly. And obviously try to get the machine pretty much in the middle. So the router is in the center of the machine. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go ahead now and we are going to attach our tramming tool into our router. So first thing to do is we're just gonna loosen off our nut here. This is already quite loose. Let's just put this in here. We're gonna push in our little red button in here. You don't have to get it all the way in through to the top but we're just gonna get this started on here. And then now that we're starting to get a little bit tight, let's just come in and add a little bit more pressure. Now, it is recommended for you to use your smaller spanner in order to do this, rather than using the little red button on the front. It's not designed to have a lot of pressure on there. Let's just get it in there. It doesn't need to be too tight. We just need to make sure that our tramming tool is firmly secured, and we don't wanna damage that collet with the threads of the bolt that we've put in there. So if we have a look now, you can see that our tramming tool is currently inserted into our router. And if you have a look now, we can actually swing this all the way around the machine. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our X axis is actually trammed correctly. So the easiest way to do this, we're just gonna put this over to one side. The X axis is the axis that runs side to side across this gantry. And so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna adjust this knob on the top here. And we're gonna lower this down just so our bolt over here on the left-hand side is as close to the bottom as we can possibly get it. So let's just bring it down so it's about maybe one millimeter off the surface. And then now what we wanna do is we're gonna swing this around to this side and we're just gonna see if we have the same amount of distance between here. And as you can see, we've actually got about a five millimeter gap over this side. So if we swing this back around again, we'll just double check. You can see we've only got about a one or two mil gap just here. Yet over this side, we have about a five or a six mil gap over here and it's quite large. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to grab our three mil Allen key here and we're gonna go through and adjust the tramming on the x-axis here. So you will notice on the side here of the machine that where the actual spindle clamp is, there is a bolt inside here and underneath here, there is also another bolt. 
And then around this side here, we have a bolt and another bolt in here. And so these four bolts are what hold this bracket in its position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully loosen off all four of this, these bolts here. Now, the one tip I will give you, when you're using an Allen key, you may notice that one side has a ball end on there and the other side has a flat end. Now, we would definitely recommend using the flat end so you don't strip out your bolt heads. So let's just go ahead and loosen this off now. So we'll do the right hand side first and then we'll come around to this side here and we will loosen this side off here as well. Whoops. Don't loosen these off so much that the bolts actually come out of the T-nuts. We basically just want to break that tightness of the actual of the actual bond that it has to the Z-axis. So that should probably do. If we take a look now on here, we should be able to wiggle this bracket. Yes, we can. And so what we're trying to do now is we want to try to make it so that when we swing this arm around, the distance on this side has the same clearance to your bed as the distance on the other side. So we knew before that we were about two mil off, so I'm gonna to try to tilt this this direction. So if I grab the clamp here and just adjust it, I'm gonna hold that into position now, and I'm just gonna lock in just one of these bolts just to put the tension back on there. All right, now let's go have a look. We've got a gap here of Looks like just over three mil. So there's a gap here of just over three mil here. Let's go and swing this arm around to this side here. And we looks like we have a gap also just over three mil. That's just clearing under there. Now across a distance of 600 millimeters, having a gap of pretty much three mil here on this side and a gap of three mil over here on this side. is actually pretty close, but let's see if we can just give this a little bit more of a nudge and get it just that little bit closer. That's feeling a bit closer again now. I'm pretty happy with this. So across a span of 600 millimeters, we've managed to get within about one millimeter of both sides of the machine. So let's just go ahead now and lock this into place here. So we'll start with our top one at the top here, using the flat side of our Allen key. Okay, and we'll come in underneath here now and we'll lock this side in as well. get it in there might be a little bit fiddly for you there we go and then we'll come back around and we will secure our bottom on here again there we go so we've got that nice and tight on here now so let's just go ahead and just double check to see whether or not we have stayed the same. So we've still got our three mil across there, pretty close to three mil. And we'll bring it around to this side here. And again, we're pretty much around that three mil mark there. So that's very, very close. So we're very happy with that on our X axis. And what that means is that whatever cutter you have in there, if it has a flat bottom on there, it's actually going to be very, very flat in this direction on the machine. Okay, so the next step from here is for us to repeat this process with the Y-axis itself as well. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to go come around to the side of our machine. We're going to take our 3mm Allen key with us. Now what we're going to do, we're just going to take a look and see what our height difference is like front to back now. So if we take a look here, Look, we're pretty much about maybe two millimeters or so off the surface on this side of the machine. If we swing our arm around to this side, 
you can see that we've got roughly about a four millimeter deviation there. So we'll just check it and see. So we'll just check it and see. And yes, we do have clearance there. So we're pretty close on the Y axis, but we're not quite perfect. So what we, what we might do is we're just gonna swing this back around to the front here. And we're just gonna ever so slightly lower this down towards the surface so that we still have clearance. But as you can see, we've only got roughly about one millimeter of clearance here, which is good enough for us. And so this would be much easier for us to tell how close we are on the other side when we swing back around. So we've got roughly about a two millimeter gap there now. Yep, we can't quite fit our three mil Allen key under there. So what we need to do now is adjust the trimming on our Y axis. So to do that, you'll notice we have this gantry that runs all the way across the machine that's held together by these plates. And on the side here, we have these four bolts, one, two, three, and four. And these bolts are the ones that actually secure this to this plate. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna very carefully just loosen these off. Again, making sure to use the flat tool on your Allen key and not the ball end. There we go, that's quite loose on there now. And then we're gonna come around to the other side of the machine and we're going to repeat this process. So again, on the side of this machine here, we have these four bolts here, one, two, three, four. So let's just go ahead and loosen these ones off as well. Two, three, and then the bottom one down here as well. And then now what we can do is we can basically rock our gantry into position. So we'll swing this back around to the front here because we knew that our clearance here was very, very close. If we bring it around the back, we still have our little gap at the back there. So let's keep that at the back. And all we want to do now is basically grab our gantry from roughly in the middle and just give it a bit of a twist so that it's very, very close on that side. Just hold it in position and just roll this back around here. So if we look at our height here, we've got roughly about two millimeters there. And then if we swing this back around to the other side, we've pretty much got about two millimeters there. So while we're holding our gantry in position, let's just go back through and we're gonna re-tighten our bolts here. So I'm gonna start with this top one here first, and then I'm going to do the four on this side. And so all we're doing is we're just re-tightening those four bolts that we've loosened off. So that does that. Now let's just double check our tramming here again. So from the back here, we still have a gap of about maybe two millimeters across the back there. Let's just double check with our, yep, about two millimeters. And then if we swing this back around to the front as well, Yep, about two millimeters of gap across there too. So this is very, very good. All we need to do now is just lock these back in. So to do the top one, make sure to hold your cable chain bracket um, just so that it sits rather flat across here. Now I will use the ball end just to get this one started with a little bit of pressure. And then now we can actually go in and lock this one in as well and then just go ahead and do the other three on here too. There we go. Your U-Carve may look a little bit different. This is actually one of our original U-Carve machines. It was one of our very first prototype machines that we actually produced. There we go. 
and that's nice and secure on there now. So it's a good idea just to go back towards the front of the machine again now. And what we're going to do, we're just going to check to make sure that our tram is looking very, very good. So we'll check our X first. We have about two millimeters of gap across the bottom here. We'll just double check it with this. Yeah, about two mil there. We will bring this around to this side here. And about two mil of gap across there. One and a half, two mil, which is pretty close over a 600 mil distance. Let's just check the front here now for the Y axis. Got about maybe two millimeter gap there, which is looking very good. And then if we swing this around the back, and we have about a two millimeter gap here as well. So that basically completes the tramming on your u carve Now it would be a good idea just to go back through and just double check all of your bolts are nice and secure. But what this will do is it will mean that you'll get rid of all of these ridges when you're surfacing your actual spoil board and it will be nice and smooth whenever you're doing pockets with your jobs for you to get the best possible bottom finish. I hope this has been a helpful video for you today. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you like our content and we'll catch up in the future. Thanks guys.